Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, March 16th, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The models are showing snow all the way to the end of March. But the big story, powerful 7.3 earthquake rattles Japan, triggers millions of power outages, a tsunami warning, and we have volcanoes blasting to 38,000 feet. Keep calm. It's boom time. 24 inches of snow possible. Travel disruptions likely in Colorado. As the snow moves east, we have videos and pictures showing larger than normal hail raining down across central Florida. Hail warning was in effect until 6.45 p.m. Absolutely amazing. But we'll get to the models in just a minute. Now we have fire weather in the southern plains and several rounds of severe thunderstorms for the south. We just saw some of the hail there. Holy hail. Some of it's pointy and some of it's not as significant as that, but that's some good looking hail. Now, elevated to critical fire weather conditions will exist in the Southern Plains today and thunder and Thursday. Severe thunderstorms are forecast over the Southeast US today. Then additional rounds are possible from the Southern Plains to the Mid-Atlantic through next seven days as we have a system that's going to move right across the Midwest here, and we're going to get to the models in just a moment. And this includes damaging winds, large hail, a few tornadoes are, are possible, along with heavy downpours, which could cause local flooding. So here we are at the GFS model. We'll just walk it through, and you can see that system dropping down into Colorado. It's going to bring the heavy snow to the region there in the plains. It's going to move through Texas, and Kansas, where it's going to be a heavy pocket of snow here on Friday. And that's where the severe weather threat begins Friday morning as it moves east through Iowa, through Missouri, through Arkansas, and then the southeast. That You see that threat in the southeast there? Going through Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. This will be all on Friday. And it will continue to move east Friday, producing quite a bit of heavy snow on the back band there. Friday through Saturday morning, that rain's going to move east. And another snow system is going to drop into the west. That's going to bring much needed moisture to the west. If we quick walk this through. There's that snow system that moves down through Colorado tonight into tomorrow. Eventually hitting Texas and moving east through Kansas. Dumping snow in Kansas, Iowa. And the big winter chicken dinner there, Wisconsin, which could see a small pocket of 16 inches. Now, the second system is going to be right behind this, bringing more snow to the plains of Colorado, maybe four feet in some regions. So that is looking pretty fantastic. And the rest of the snow forecast, the big winter chicken dinner, northern uh, Michigan should be picking up at least a foot or more of snow over the next week and a half. And take a look at Wisconsin. Wow, they are really a blockbuster. We have something setting up here, could be at the end of March, could be unprecedented and record setting. So stay tuned for that info. Hello. Seismic update. <laughs> Here we are at the powerful 7.3 magnitude earthquake that rattled Japan earlier today, triggering millions of power outages. The quake occurred almost exactly 11 years after the same region was hit by a devastating earthquake and tsunami that triggered a nuclear meltdown. Fukushima much? Yeah, that's what we're talking about here. Now, the intense 7.3 magnitude earthquake shook northern Japan late Wednesday local time, triggering a tsunami alert for parts of the country's eastern shoreline and knocking out power for more than 2 million households. The powerful quake was reported shortly after 10.30 a.m. EDT Wednesday, just around midnight Thursday in Japan, struck about 39 miles below the sea, according to the USGS. It was not on land, or this would have been devastating. There was some damage, and there are some shaking reports, some videos online, but nothing that fantastic. Very few people injured and no loss of life that we know of. There's the quake, followed by several aftershocks. Another quake of note just kicking off 5.1 in the Craton here of China. So that's quite interesting. And no other quakes of note. Moving on to worldwide volcano news update. We have, well, just one big story, and that's Bezimiani. We reported on Bezimiani waking up just a few days ago, and certainly it has awoken. Over two events to 38,000 feet have happened in the last 24 hours, and there is some footage of the events that we could share with you here. Let's watch this again. Now, 
This is the highest resolution footage of the actual first event at 38,000 feet, another event occurring today. We may get some footage from that event tomorrow. Now, at first, it doesn't look like anything spectacular. We have some pyroclastic flows. We have some bombs and some lavas coming down the side of the flank there. But it's about to light up. So just bear with us. And this baby is about to blow in a big way. Because I was looking at this and saying, where is the 38,000 foot plume? It has to be a spectacular explosion to create that. And there's the explosion. Boom! Take a look at that force. That's what shoots this cloud seven miles up in, into the stratosphere in this region of Kamchatka. So this is going to add a little bit of insult to injury to the current weather patterns we've been experiencing as this one is up in the northern hemisphere. and It's just puffed out there. So spectacular footage from Benzimiani tonight. Now here we are over at Um, some Himawari 8 true color images and that entire thousand mile long ash streak is from Bezamiani covering the snow. Do you see that discolored snow up in the north here? So quite a spectacular explosion and you can even see some of the plume moving here up in the upper atmosphere. But the snow is colored. And there's another shot from satellite imagery from space clearly you can see here hundreds of miles of ash covering the snow and this is an ongoing event so we're going to keep keep a close eye on Vesemiani um, as it has now had two events in the last 24 hours to 38,000 feet holy macaroni March 2020 La Nina update three bean salad here you can see the three-dimensional modeling of the pattern of cold water and the difference from average here moving from the Galapagos Islands to the west. And we could pan down here to the current models that are showing a three bean salad, meaning three years. Here's the second La Nina year. Will it be a third La Nina year? The odds of that are just as 50%. It'll be a third La Nina year as it will be an El Nino winter. But based on all of the information I have, it will be coming into neutral or El Nino. Mark my words. And that has to do with a couple of things that are happening on Earth that we just showed you. Now, why are we seeing more northern lights this year? Well, because we are ramping up into the next solar cycle. And here we are at the solar cycle pro progression. And you can see this brown line here is solar cycle 25. It's lying right on top of the pink line which was solar cycle 24, it's basically mimicking 24. You can see it's not even close to any of the previous cycles of 23, 22, and 21 here, um, which were way ahead of the game much earlier than this. So it's more of a mimic of 24. Uh, it could peak early and then drop down lower. It could peak much earlier and drop down. It's anyone's guess what this does. There's not enough information. People are predicting it's bigger than any cycle on this map, and some people are predicting it's smaller than the pink cycle. We predicted it's probably the same and slightly larger, uh, but not exceeding at any point a 125 sunspots, which is right up in this region. That would be another indication that we are deepening into the grand minima because each subsequent cycle is weaker and weaker and weaker. And this is, 24 is one of the weakest cycles in a century. And this one is going to mimic it. So the same grand solar minimum effects from this solar cycle. Now the problem is that this ramp up, just like in 24, this is when the sun becomes active and this is when the solar flares occur. And it is, was our prediction all along right here in 2023, the beginning of 2023, is the biggest threat for the grid on Earth in human history. And there, there is no one on the planet that will debate me on that topic because of our weakened magnetosheath, our weakened magnetosphere, and the fact that the sun ramps up every 11 years and shoots off potential X flares right at us. This is that peak time, 2023, the entire year of 2023. So that's the warning. We need to be prepared to be off grid by the end of 2023. If it doesn't happen then, it'll happen in 25. 
or 26 if it's a second double high peak. This is the most active regions on the sun during the cycle. Now, our universe may have a twin that runs backward in time. An anti-universe running backwards in time could explain dark matter and cosmic inflation. Yes. Or it could explain how stupid science is and that you actually fall for this gobbledygook, which we call science fiction. Our universe may have a twin that runs backwards to explain something we've been looking for to the cost of hundreds of billions of dollars we haven't found a single grain of. That makes sense. <laughs> now the Webb Telescope is sharing new images after reaching a milestone. It's calibrated the camera, folks. And the telescope alignment evaluation image is glorious. It's showing galaxies all in the background. And they're focusing on one light source there. So they're just aligning these lenses. And soon some of the most revealing pictures well, in all of modern astronomy and astrophysics will be upon us. And it will be glorious. Now, have you heard, it just passed through the Senate, the U.S. tried permanent, or it passed through the House. I don't know where it passed. It just passed. A bill passed to, to uh, implement permanent daylight savings time. That means we don't have to fall back in the fall. We just keep the clocks here forever. And that means in the winter... It's going to stay lighter longer at night. It won't get dark at 4.30. It'll finally get dark at 5.30. The only problem is it'll be very dark in the morning because the sun doesn't come up in some places till 8.30 or 9 near that solstice point. So we'll see if it does pass the Senate and gets the presidential approval. Permanent daylight savings time is on its way to the record books. Now, we showed you footage of a where rare wolverine captured on film but they just captured one in a cage in utah first time ever researchers in utah made a once in a lifetime find last week trapping a live wolverine it was suspected in 18 sheep deaths in the area but they actually got a wolverine in a trap look at the size of those paws this thing is a beast and they've got a collar on him and they released him back into nature that's amazing. He was affixed with a GPS collar to allow wildlife personnel to monitor his movements and whereabouts. Officials had released him on public lands in the Uinta Mountains on Friday evening. This is a once-in-a-lifetime experience that we wanted to share with you. Now, did you know in 1704, Sir Isaac Newton predicted that the world will end in 2060? Well, you might very well be right. What say you? And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where all of the mainstream media is propaganda. Please subscribe to the channel and share this with like-minded people. Be safe. We love you. Mm -hmm.